Hello, I'm Peter Orker from uh, Peter Orker Piano Tuition and it's time for my Tuesday tutorial this week. In previous weeks we've looked at works by Scarlatti and Mozart and now it's time to complete our little recital with um, a slightly more modern piece. Um, when I say modern, it's not that modern, uh, but it's still regarded in the overall scheme of classical music as one of the modern composers, and that's Debussy, one of my favourite composers for the piano. Now, I thought long and hard about which piece to go over with uh, this part of it, and decided on the prelude from Debussy's Sweet Beggar Mask. Now, you may not have heard of that because it's not played all that frequently, uh, but I'm sure you will have come across one of the movements from Sweet Beggar Mask because it's one of the most famous pieces of uh, piano music ever written. Uh, and that's uh, Claire de Lune. Uh, that's the one that starts... Um, and so on. Um, now, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube by uh, far better pianists than me about how to play Claire de Lune. So I thought I'd leave Claire de Lune, um, uh, much as I love playing it, um, I thought I'd leave that one and I thought I'd do the prelude from this suite. Now like a lot of music, the prelude to Sweet Beggar Mask falls into a number of sections, a little bit like the Mozart Rondo, which we were looking at previous weeks. Um, and sure enough, the prelude breaks into, um, well, really three sections, actually, um, but they're not as clear-cut sections as in the Mozart Rondo. Um, but they are that definitely change slight changes of uh, mood and character as you go through each uh, each section. So I'm not going to play the whole thing now. Um, we're just going to look at the first section of music, um, which takes us to. It's not that long actually. It just takes us to about the middle of the second page. Annoyingly, we don't have bar numbers on this, so uh, I just have to say the middle of the second page and hope you get what I mean. In fact, why don't I just play that whole section uh, and then we'll take it from there. So here's the section of, of the prelude to Sweet Bear Gavars by Debussy, which we're going to be focusing on in today's Tuesday tutorial.
Okay, there are a number of uh, little technical things that we can um, highlight in that section. First of all is uh, the really the use of the pedal because that comes in straight away at the beginning um, because you build up this bold start Oops. and in the music when you hit that chord there uh, the C here should really still be sounding and the only way to achieve that is using your pedal. But on the other hand, you don't want the F to be sounding as well. Otherwise you get this quite sort of... Um, quite muddy sort of sound. So, the way to do this is to pedal on the first, the very first note, the very low F. down on the first C and then release quickly release and quickly pedal on the second C and then hit that chord so I'll do that in slow motion so you pedal There's a kind of flourish. Uh, and all through that flourish, you can keep your pedal down. So you, you've got this. Now, the key to playing this beautifully is to um, exercise a little bit of rubato. You probably noticed that when I did my semiquavers, they weren't strict da 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 um, Which, I mean, you can do that. <laughs> uh, but I think it works nicer just to hold the first group of four semiquavers slightly back. Um, so... cascade down under that. The next slightly tricky technical point comes only a little bit further on in bar one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, there's this little bit of two-part writing in the right hand which goes See that takes a little bit of management uh, but in the left hand too and here is again where the pedal is your friend because you literally cannot stretch those intervals unless you've got a hand of absolute giant proportions um, it's just too wide to get from here or to play do it comfortably and to do it at the right speed. So what I do is I just put a little pedal there to hold that note and then release it and as I hit that D I release and pedal again. So it's all in the pedal. It's like, like that. Um, so that usually <laughs> makes it work. So we've got so that's the next sort of, if you like, crunch point. Um, and again, where it's it's really pedalling that is the key to so much of this. Uh, in our, at the bottom of that page, that first page, we've got this. Get the, the 
correct resonance for that, um, you really need to pedal every single one of those chords because they're all slightly subtly different. Um, if I do it slowly uh, without the pedal, we're just dealing with parallel chords here. Um, pedal it's too dry if you just stick the pedal down and hope for the best everything blurs into uh, everything else like this this is awful please don't do that <laughs> I was examining uh, a grade 8 candidate for uh, Trinity just the other day and they played absolutely beautifully. It wasn't this piece. Uh, this is a bit beyond grade eight. Um, but they played beautifully. But they just had the pedal down the whole time. And it just, ooh, it just sounded a horrible mess. So what you need to do is just pedal each of those chords separately. So your, your foot is sort of, you, you can't see my foot on the video, but the foot's going up, down, up, down, up, down. Uh, in time with all of those chords, just catching them so you get that lovely resonance uh, from the pedalling, uh, but you don't get the blurring and you don't get the dryness of sound, which you don't really want um, if you don't use any pedal. We get this. <laughs> pretty good on your, your third playing so a bit of thirds exercising before you attempt this is always a good thing and the other thing to bear in mind with this section of it is that sometimes rhythmically it does strange it does surprising things so when you hit this bit This sounds as if it should be on the beat, but it actually starts on the off beat, starts on the second quaver. Uh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three. And there's a quaver rest. Just to take out all the harmonies in the middle. Um, and also, that's quite hushed, that's quite quiet for most of that, so it's quiet here. Oops, getting the notes right. Uh. And then louder. And then louder still. section. So most of this really to make this work is listening very carefully to the sound you're making and using that sustain pedal um, very very carefully and thoughtfully as you go through. And so the uh, performance instruction at the beginning of the music is moderato so moderately fast, not too fast, uh, and it's tempo rubato. So that means with the rubato, it means you don't have to stick absolutely strictly to the rhythms. And there are some places later on in, in later sections where you'll see that a rubato approach um, is going to actually uh, help you with playing this piece. One more thing to say about it. Um, be careful on these semiquavers. Uh, make sure you've got your pencil out and you've worked out the best kind of fingering to write in there, to put in there. Um, and make sure you're consistent 
with your fingering otherwise uh, you can easily come it can easily collapse it, it looks quite easy to play it's not uh, <laughs> and as it's so near the beginning of the piece you know you can have a car crash right before before you've hardly started okay well, I'm gonna leave it there um, happy practicing I hope you enjoy uh, working on uh, Sweet Burger Mask Prelude by Debussy and uh, next time we'll look at the middle section which is quite a bit longer I have to say it's what is it it's about two pages it's still not that long it's quite a short piece actually um, but it's it's um, perfectly designed as they say okay well thanks for watching and I'll look forward to next week's Tuesday tutorial bye for now